Hello everyone, my name is Ludislav Tankov. I'm a software developer at JetBrains. Also, I'm the creator of Kotlis, a Kotlin serverless framework. We'll start with a brief introduction on the subject of serverless. It's a pretty hot topic right now, but not everyone knows what it is. By the definition, serverless is a cloud computing execution model in which the cloud provider runs the server and dynamically manages the allocation of machine resources. Thank you, Wikipedia. In other words, there are three simple steps that comprise the basics of all serverless. First of all, we take really small elements, functions, and you know, this is very important. Those functions are actually stateless, meaning that they do not save any state between invocations. Then we take events and link an application with them into an event-driven application. In the end, we deploy our event-driven function-based application to manage it runtime. That runtime may be managed by cloud providers like AWS Cloud or provided by your own DevOps. Either way works. From those three simple steps emerges a full application building approach that helps you to create very complex applications. For example, you can create a REST API application with stateless functions that serve different HTTP routes. Those functions may call other functions synchronously and asynchronously, and they may work with databases and other cloud services. We see that serverless is an application building approach for creating cloud native applications with a very specific architecture. Why should we use it? What are the pros of such an approach? First of all, in case of serverless, you pay per request. This means that if your application is not used, you pay literally nothing. And let's be honest, for a pet project, it is a great option that can save you a lot of money. Second, since your functions are stateless, your environment is managed by the cloud provider, and the whole application is event-based, there is no problem with an automatic scaling. Get a lot of events, OK, scale up the application, and set sail. Got no users bearers bone, OK, scale down the application to zero working resources. No need to go bankrupt. And last but certainly not least, you'll get fault tolerance. Indeed, if the problem is with one specific request, that makes a function fail, it does not mean that the whole application should fail. It means that this specific function created for this event will fail, and that's on. So, no cons. Is it actually that good? Unfortunately, no. Serverless at its roots is overcomplicated. On the right part of slide, you can see a part of a real-world function deployment. It is a super simple serverless function that serves only one HTTP path and it goes all the way up and all the way down. You will need around 100 lines of configuration to define your serverless application in some cloud. Those lines will instruct cloud providers which events the serverless application expects and emits are, and which functions are subscribed to which event. And you know, the real problem is that we all, you will also need to know a special language of configuration management to write this configuration. But should it really be that way? Should we write so much configuration code for very simple tasks? Kotlis offers a simple yet powerful solution to the configuration problem. Here is some very simple code. It speaks for itself. I want to create a get handler for the path hello world and return hello world from it. It isn't clear what headers should be used, but OK, use the default ones. Let the MIME type be plain text. But don't make me write a deployment for something that is very obvious. So. The main idea is that in a bunch of cases, the code speaks for itself. In the case of API interaction, when we define in code what method, path, and parameters we expect, why should I repeat it in a configuration script? So, if it can be deduced, it should be deduced and created automatically. Basically, that is what Kotlis does. It integrates with existing frameworks, introspects them, and generates a configuration for your application right from the application itself, from any framework, to any cloud. We call this approach infrastructure in code. Kotlis deduces the infrastructure right from the application and deploys it to the cloud, thus reducing the routine of defining the deployment. You write the code with the framework of your choice, like Spring or Kata. Then you choose cloud platform to use and just chill. Kotlis will do everything else for you. And you know, the code we've been discussing is an actual Kotlis code. So. What's in the box? What does Kotlis support right now? Several frameworks are supported. Each of them can be deployed to the cloud with your preferred target runtime. 
Let's take a look at that step by step. First of all, there are a few different frameworks that Kotlis is able to introspect and generate deployments for. One is our beloved Cater, with its function-based HTTP DSL and without any user reflection. It guarantees very fast startup and great performance. Another is a very well-known Spring framework, more specifically Spring Boot. In this case, Kotlis introspects the annotations of Spring to generate configuration of a serverless application. Finally, there is also the Kotlis own DSL. It supports all the default operations that other web frameworks support. But the distinctive feature of the Kotlis DSL is that it was specifically designed for serverless use cases. As for the target cloud platforms, Kotlis currently supports Amazon Web Services via API Gateway and AWS Lambda. We are working hard to make the first setup of AWS simpler. I'll talk about that a bit later. We also plan to support Google Cloud Platform and Microsoft Azure. Kotlis is a cloud agnostic tool, so we expect that migrating applications between clouds should be possible in one click. Since Kotlin is a multi-platform language, Kotlis also aims to support different targets, also called function runtimes. Right now, Kotlis works with the JVM runtime. It has some drawbacks. For example, the JVM is infamous for very slow starts. Kotlis is trying to mask this problem with auto warming and other techniques that will be applied to your application automatically. We also support DryVM in beta, which eliminates the problem of cold starts and is very performant in general. However, it brings new problem of slow compilation and partly unsupported reflection. Finally, Kotlin JavaScript support is also under development right now. It is also very fast on startup, but not so performant overall. So, this is the state of Kotlis right now. Three frameworks supported, two runtimes, and one cloud. Other things are under development. Oh, and yeah, I've mentioned attempts to simplify working with the cloud. Kotlis has a local start. With local start, you can run your application locally without access to the cloud. Kotlis will run cloud emulation and will override clients used in the application if you use a specific an extension, an extension function to connect to the local emulation. So with Kotlis, you'll be able to run the application locally with full cloud emulation and even debug it. Now let's sum it up. With Kotlis, you'll be able to choose your preferred runtime, JVM, JavaScript, or GraalVM, write an application with the framework of your choice, Spring, Cater, or Kotlis's own DSL, test and debug the application locally, and in the end, deploy it to the cloud you prefer. Now, let's dive a bit into the internals of Kotlis. How does it work? What is the magic behind it? Under the hood, the architecture of Kotlis is pretty straightforward. During the deployment process, an application passes a few steps of the deployment pipeline. In the first step, the application is being passed. Depending on the frameworks you use, either Spring Boot or Keita, Kotlis chooses the appropriate parser. The result of parsing is a so-called schema. It's a definition of the REST API and events of the application written in a cloud-agnostic way, inspired by OpenAPI and CloudEvents.io. Once we get the schema, transpilation is performed. Kotlis uses Terraform as its configuration management tool. It's a major and very popular DevOps tool for creating infrastructure. Basically, Kotlis performs a transpilation of its own schema into Terraform. Note that transpilation is cloud-dependent. The code generated for AWS would differ from the code generated for Google Cloud Platform. Once the Terraform code is ready, the deployment is performed. It's done via Terraform and Kotlis is not involved in the process at all. This architecture gives Kotlis a great deal of flexibility. We are able to add support for new frameworks and new clouds independently and safely. Kotlis also has so-called cloud extensions or cloud integration. Cloud integration is necessary since not everything can be expressed in the standard form of web frameworks DSLs. For example, if you are creating a cloud native application, you need to work with cloud services. But to do so, you have to get permissions. And there is no such abstraction as permission in Cater or Spring. That's why Kotlis provides its own extensions to deal with the cloud infrastructure. Such extensions include special annotations to grant permissions and special annotations to work with events and define event handlers. Now, let's get to the demo. So, let's take a look at an example written with Cater and deployed via Kotlis. It's a very simple URL shortener. And you can see the way it works. Yep, here it is. 
This example is taken from the main repository of Kotlin, and you can find it there at Kotlin slash example slash kata slash shortener at JetBrains slash Kotlin. The real shortener is already up and running at kata.shot.kotlin.io. First of all, let us take a look at the Gradle script. We apply Kotlin Gradle plugin with ID io.kotlin version 017. And we are adding Kterlang dependency with the same version. This dependency is providing Kter DSL. Next, we are uh, adding a Kotlis configuration. It includes certain configurations related to AWS, name of credentials profile used, name of the region where we are deploying our application, name of the bucket, and so on. It also includes the definition of DNS record uh, that application should use, kata.shot.kotlis.io. One more pretty interesting part is the extension block. In this case, we are using Terraform extensions uh, functionality. Our shortener saves data to DynamoDB and we need to create it with Terraform code. We instruct Kotlis to add the file with the DynamoDB table to generate the deployment code before the deployment itself. And here is the definition of DynamoDB file. But you know, there is so much configuration here. What if I don't have an AWS account? What if I don't have a DNS record? No problem. Local starts to the rescue. We can just remove all the paths related to AWS, open Gradle, and run local, sta local start. First of all, uh, local task starts a local stack. It's a cloud emulation tool that Kotlis uses. In case of a shortener, it will emulate DynamoDB table and uh, after the start of local start of local stack, Kotlis applies Terraform extensions to local stack, effectively creating a DynamoDB table. After it, application is started and we can see it working on localhost. Since we have the whole, the whole cloud emulation, we are able to actually shorten the link. Our application would use a cloud emulation started locally and DynamoDB table that is emulated locally. And it will even work. Now let's take a look at the code itself. Using Kotlis for Kata, you should only inherit one interface, Kotlis. And everything else remains the same. You'll just define get and post routes inside the routing lambda. Uh, and using the same application you would use inside Kata and inside standard Kata engines. Static features are detected automatically by Kotlis. So the static files will be served from S3 instead of lambdas. Simple and effective. One more interesting part is URL storage. This is the object that is notated with Grenal permissions annotation that grants anyone who accesses this object a read and write access to our DynamoDB table. This way works lambdas that um, are handling HTTP, hand, uh, HTTP events uh, and this way they are accessing the DynamoDB table that we have created. So. This example is available in the main repository of Kotlis. Now let's back to the presentation. And finally, let's talk about the future of Kotlis. I've already mentioned that we have the support of two more clouds in development, Google Cloud Platform and Microsoft Asia. We also have GraalVM in beta and Kotlin.js under development. But that is not all. We are also aiming to create an IntelliJ IDEA plugin with the remote log staling and even, even cloud debugging since it is now supported in AWS and will probably be supported in other clouds too. We are willing to develop cloud extensions, that is, add authentication and more events, including custom event handlers, and there is much, much more that we would like to do. Hopefully, someday all of it will help people create serverless applications more easily. Thank you for watching, and good luck. I hope to see you in serverless worlds.